Hi, my name is Dr. Ken McLean. I'm a pediatric hematologist oncologist at Texas Children's uh, Cancer Center in Houston, Texas. And I'm the clinical director of the histiocytosis program. So hi, I'm Carl Allen. I'm also a hematologist oncologist at Texas Children's Cancer Center. I'm the scientific director of the histiocytosis program. And I work with Ken McLean on histiocytic diseases in children. Histiocyte is a white blood cell that's part of the immune system. It's supposed to uh, pick up information and pass that information on to another cell of the immune system called the lymphocyte. And together, they make a response to an immunization, a germ, or a cancer cell. Histiocytosis is a general term for several diseases of these white blood cells called histiocytes. And the histiocytes have a, the ability to change their uh, form and their function and, and look differently in, different, in these different diseases. But just as a general class, the histiocytoses are diseases where there are too many of these cells along with some other cells collected in some place in the body and causes the disease. The estimate is that there are between five to eight per million children affected by, by Langerhans cell histiocytosis. That's the most frequent. Uh, the second most frequent is uh, the hemophagocytic lymphohistiocytosis, or HLH, and the incidence there is between one and two per million. The histiocytic diseases are most frequently seen in, in children from birth to six years of age, but it can be at any age. The most frequent is Langerhans cell histiocytosis, the next is hemophagocytic lymphohistiocytosis, or HLH. There's juvenile xanthogranuloma, JXG, Rosai Dorfman disease, so RDD, and finally uh, Erdheim Chester disease. Symptoms of, of LCH can look like a lot of different things. It can be a simple skin rash um, that just won't go away. Um, there can be bone lesions, and some children may complain of bone pain. LCH can attack a part of the brain called the pituitary that controls uh, thirst, and so some children uh, will come to us because they, they can't stop drinking or they lose the ability to concentrate their urine, and they start wetting the bed when they never wet the bed before. And again, all of these things are symptoms that are part of much more common pediatric illnesses, and it really requires the pediatrician to um, think about when common treatments don't work, what's the next step? And again, the next step is to do a biopsy if, or to do imaging and then to do a biopsy to make the final diagnosis. With HLH, children uh, typically have a fever and then the fever quickly progresses to um, something beyond a normal illness where they get multi-system organ failure in a short period of time. Uh, and really what HLH is, is the body has a, um, a the normal child has a response to a to a trigger, to an inflammatory trigger, where the immune system mounts an attack and then it goes away once the problem is solved. In HLH, the immune system gets revved up but it never shuts itself off. Um, and the immune system then goes on to attack the organs of the body, leading to uh, basically what we call pathologic inflammation. And you require uh, immune suppression medication to take care of that. Oftentimes parents will ask us, what caused LCH? We don't know. It's, we do understand it as a dysregulation of the immune system, but there have been no infections, no in environmental factors, uh, really no strong connection with anything outside the body or inside the body. There's a very uh, interesting correlation that many patients have family members with thyroid disease, and we don't understand what that means, but I think it tells us something about the immune system being a little bit out of balance in that particular family. The way we approach treating LCH um, is similar to the way we treat other uh, childhood cancers and related illnesses, which is to take the experience of um, cooperative international groups in the best published standard of care. Um, so the Histiocyte Society over the last 30 years or so has um, collected the experiences from around the world and compared uh, outcomes in children with different um, treatment strategies. And so we use protocols that are pretty standard um, to start therapy um, based on Histiocyte Society published data. Um, where things get tricky is when patients um, 
uh, don't respond well to the best published data. Um, and so what we try to do at Texas Children's is create um, local protocols, pilot studies with new drugs, uh, new agents based on our observations of how um, patients have done over the last several years with different, um, different approaches. And we're working on creating prospective clinical trials here at Texas Children's Hospital that we then hope to export to other institutions. We have very good outcomes. I don't think a patient has died of LCH here in over a, a decade. It's because we found new treatments to give to these children when the frontline treatment doesn't work, and this has been a very big success. Patients who don't respond to first therapy are really difficult because there's not a lot of published data on, uh, on drugs that work for second line. And a lot of patients do not respond to first therapy. About 30% or so of patients will require additional uh, treatments. Um, and so we're working on uh, alternative strategies with, uh, again, with prospective clinical trials using agents that have worked uh, in the past uh, based on our observations at Texas Children's. But if we can put them into clinical trials that we can then take to other institutions, hopefully those will become standard of care uh, nationally and internationally. The disease and the treatment can cause long-term effects. The, the disease can affect the pituitary and cause uh, diabetes insipidus or growth problems, and that may or may not be stopped by treatment. The uh, disease could also affect the back part of the brain and cause difficulties with balance and thinking and speaking. If it affects the lungs, then a person might have some difficulty running and playing vigorously. Uh, some patients have bone marrow uh, failure because of the disease or the drugs and likewise some of the drugs can cause problems with growth and development. The best way to treat HLH is to first to recognize it. So without therapy almost a hundred percent of patients who have HLH will die and so it's really crucial that HLH be recognized and so um, once the diagnosis is made Treatment is a little bit challenging, but it typically consists of strong immune suppression with steroids or antibodies that are aimed to get rid of um, the parts of the immune system that are hyperactivated. Um, but again, the, the main point for treating HLH is first to recognize it. Well, overall, patients with HLH who either receive the chemotherapy or go on to uh, stem cell transplant have a 65% uh, overall survival. There can be long-term effects from the, the treatment of HLH. So again, our, our goal is to um, give the best treatment with the, the most effective treatment with the least side effects. So kids typically will have a prolonged period of immune suppression with steroids, which can have some uh, side effects, including immune suppression. And then for those children who go into bone marrow transplant, um, that process has some significant side effects as well. So again, what we're trying to do with each stage of this treatment is to find the most effective therapy uh, along with the therapy that will be the least toxic to the patients. At Texas Children's, we have a program that's really designed to comprehensively study patients with all forms of histiocytic diseases. And our model really is uh, pretty simple. It's to offer the best clinical care we can. And then for patients who come either locally or who come to us from other places, we offer the opportunity for all of these uh, patients and families to enroll on, uh, on both clinical studies as well as biology studies. And so while we're offering the best care that we know how to give today, we're also studying the diseases to figure out better uh, treatments for the future. And part of this cycle is then to, to um, create pilot clinical trials at Texas Children's Hospital that can then be exported to other institutions. When the patient is referred to the histiocytosis uh, center, we uh, have a very smooth process. You call our clinic coordinator, Paula Jones, at 832-822-4866, and she will facilitate your visit by helping you get the uh, radiographs, the pathology slides, and the clinical information that will help us uh, take care of your child the best we know how. When you come here, your child will be fully evaluated by one of the members of our team, and we will look at all the uh, items that are important for understanding this, your child's disease. We'll give you a recommendation for treatment, and that may be done here, or we may send you home with a plan that can be implemented there. Likewise, for adult patients, we do the same thing. We can uh, implement treatments here, or we can send you home with a plan.